I'm David Yule from the University of Rochester in the Department of Pharmacology and Physiology, and I'm going to talk about uh, insight into IP3 receptor structure and function using Lego building blocks as the receptor subunits. So dynamic changes in intracellular calcium control uh, a vast array of uh, cellular processes, and these include muscle contraction, secretion of fluid and protein, gene transcription, metabolism, and cell fate. The normal cellular situation is that multiple calcium-dependent processes operate in the same cells, but the activation exhibits precise fidelity and specificity such that individual cellular events can be controlled appropriately to meet the cell's need. So, for example, in, in an asthma cell that secretes digestive enzyme, you promote excitosis without stimulating gene transcription at inappropriate times and vice versa. So it's widely believed that the pr precise control uh, results because of an intricate um, regulation of the spatial and temporal characteristics of the calcium signal. And this in turn occurs because of the localization, abundance, and uh, regulation, specific regulation of the calcium handling machinery. These molecules and proteins are responsible for both the increase in calcium, the release and influx mechanisms, and the termination of the signal pumps, transporters, and buffers have been termed the calcium signaling toolkit by Michael Berridge and his colleagues. In my lab, uh, the central tenant which drives our research is that the endoplasmic reticulum resident intracellular calcium channel, the inositol 145 trisphosphate receptor, is a fundamental constituent of this toolkit and responsible for shaping or controlling the calcium signal in time and space. So as background, the IP3 family is encoded by three genes, which uh, result in uh, expression of uh, three distinct and very large proteins of around about 300 kilodalton, known as receptor one, and one to three, so IP3 receptor one, two, and three. The functional receptor is assembled as a tetramer, and evidence suggests that this can either, either be identical subunits, a homotetramer, or a heterotetramer formed from subunits of multiple family members. The protein is modular. Each monomer contains a binding site for IP3 at its end terminus, and determinants of the channel pour and oligomerization towards the C terminus. These regions are conserved between subtypes. However, the intervening 1,500 amino acids between the IP3 binding domain and the, and the uh, channel uh, domain are much more diverse and are termed the regulatory and coupling domain. As, as that name suggests, the regulatory and coupling domain, uh, the region is primarily responsible for recognizing and transducing the important input controlling channel activity. And because of diversity in the primary amino acid sequence, this often occurs in IP3 uh, subtype specific manner. Documented important regulators of activity include calcium, um, the levels of, of ATP, phosphorylation of the protein, and numerous um, binding partners. Our view is that as a function of regulation by these factors, uh, that IP3 receptors serve as signal integrators to tune the calcium signal to the cell's needs. And this in turn is central to determining the diverse characteristics of the cellular, cellular calcium signals and appropriate activation of effectors. So in my presentation, I'd like to show two vignettes uh, using engineered IP3 receptors to investigate two relatively unexplored aspects of IP3 regulation. First, I'll show some recent data which investigates how subtype-specific regulation of uh, individual IP3 receptor subtypes impacts the overall activity um, of heterotetrameric IP3 receptors. And, and we believe that heterotetrameric receptors are actually the norm in most cells that express multiple IP3 subtypes. Secondly, I'll show some data which illustrates the unexpected consequences um, on IP3 receptor activity of proteolytically cleaving the receptor. So. Uh, as background, uh, we've been interested for a number of years in how IP3 receptors are regulated by cellular levels of nucleotides, uh, as, as we believe this provides a link between the metabolic status of the cell and the degree of calcium release that, um, that the cell is capable of. And we have shown that when stably expressed in isolation, uh, I, in an IP3 null background, the DT4T3KO cell, that regulation by ATP is profoundly subtype specific. So, for example, uh, as shown in the slide, type 1 and 3 require ATP to maximally uh, to achieve maximal calcium release rates at a given IP3, while IP3 receptor type 2 is only regulated at sub-maximal IP3 concentrations. And the sensitivity to ATP is also profoundly different. R2 is more sensitive than R1, which is much more sensitive than, than receptor 3. So given these data, our interest was, was peaked uh, when we performed similar uh, experiments in pancreatic asthma cells 
which express all three types of IP2 receptors, the type 2 and the type 3, in almost equal amounts. And um, we, we could show that the characteristics of regulation of the type of the of, of calcium release in the acinous cell were practically indistinguishable from the type 2 receptor when expressed in isolation. So this appeared to us that the properties of the IP receptor type 2 appear dominant, um, which doesn't appear to be consistent with the expression of distinct monomeric populations of receptors. So we decided to test the hypothesis that the dominant properties of R2 are because uh, the receptor is forming heterotetramers expressing R2 in each heterotetramer, and that the R2 expression in the heterotetramer uh, dominates the, the properties of the receptor. So it's actually impossible to define the composition of tetramers in vivo following transfection of plasmids into cells because you can't define how many particular monomers are present in a tetramer. So to study the properties of IP3 receptor tetramers whose composition is defined unequivocally, we designed a strategy based on the expression of concatenated IP3 receptors. This approach has been used successfully with other multi-subunit channels, but the extremely large size of the cDNA encoding monomeric IP3 receptors made this challenging. So we generated cDNA constructs which encode dimeric IP3 receptors, where the C-terminus of the first monomer is joined to the N-terminus of the next monomer by a short flexible amino acid linker. And we rationalized that the expressed IP3 receptor dimers, if recognized by the cell's biosynthetic machinery, might be assembled into tetramers. So as proof of principle, we expressed uh, R1-R1 dimers in null cells, and the R1 dimers exclusively were assembled into tetramers of 1.2 uh, megadaltons, as indicated by Western blot of protein separated on native gels. The R1 assembled from the dimer-bound IP3 uh, with an identical EC50 to the receptor 1, assembled from monomeric R1 and receptor present in cerebellar microsomes, which is a rich source of type 1 receptor. Most notably, expression of all dimeric contracts tested encoded both homo and heterodimers resulted in fully functional IP3 receptors as measured by G-alpha-Q receptor stimulation, unidirectional calcium release assays, and importantly, an on-nucleus patch clamp assay of single-channel currents. We next generated an expressed dimers consisting of one R1 and one R2 subunit, which must result in tetramers of equal numbers of individual subunits, and used these defined receptors to study regulation of single channel activity by ATP. First, the single channel activity of the R1, R1, and R2, R2 dimers were identical to channels expressed from their parent monomer subtypes. For example, the R1, R1 dimer, dimeric channel, Activity was enhanced by increasing ATP at both low and saturating IP3, whereas the R2, R2 channel activity was only altered by ATP at low IP3 concentrations, entirely consistent with the earlier calcium release data that I showed. In addition, the gating of the channel in distinctive bursts was also preserved in the homodimeric receptors. Notably, however, the activity of heterodimers containing R1 and R2 was identical to both R2 monomer and R2, R2 dimer, indicating that the properties of the R2 within a tetramer dominate the overall characteristics of the heterotetrameric channel regulation, at least in terms of ATP regulation, and lead us to speculate this is the reason for the dominant properties of the R2 in the pancreatic acinus cells that I showed uh, previously. Going forward, we anticipate that this concatenar approach will allow us to investigate in detail the core uh, features and properties of heterotetrameric uh, receptors, including those containing disease-causing mutations. Uh, which would represent the heterozygous condition. In addition, given that the motifs required for regulatory input are present in each monomer and we can mutate these residues in individual monomers, this approach will allow us to investigate the stoichiometry of regulation by important modulators such as IP3 calcium and ATP. To change gear a little, while fine-tuning of IP3-induced calcium release by modulators is undoubtedly important for normal physiological events, it's becoming increasingly clear that dysregulation of appropriate calcium signaling plays an important role in many diseases. In particular, there's been considerable work investigating the role of IP3-induced calcium signaling in promoting apoptosis. One attractive idea uh, is that protease activity initiated early in the uh, apoptotic uh, process cleaves the IP3 receptor, leaving a stump containing the channel domain in the ER and a large N-terminal fragment. In this scenario, the stump is no longer gated by IP3 and results in an unregulated calcium leak channel. 
which facilitates further uh, apoptosis by causing mitochondrial calcium overload and, ca and further caspase activation. The primary evidence supporting this idea is that overexpression of just the channel stump appears to result in increased leak. However, the fate and any role of the, end, the liberated N-terminal fragment has not been determined. So we've reinvestigated this idea. So during st starosporin-induced apoptosis, we identified proteolytic cleavage products consistent with the soluble N-terminal fragment and the, the stump. Notably, however, both fragments remained associated with membrane fractions, suggesting that the two fragments remained associated even following protease cleavage. To investigate whether expression of the cleavage products did indeed result in an unregulated leak channel, we generated stable cells expressing recombinant peptides corresponding to the two fragments produced by the uh, caspase cleavage. Expression of two independent peptide chains result, uh, resulted in an assembled protein which ran as an appropriate size for a tetrameric IP3 receptor on native gel, and cells expressing the fragments exhibited identical basal calcium and store content to cells expressing a native wild type R1, indicating that these um, fractions do not produce a, a leaky channel. Remarkably, however, calcium signals could be rarely, readily evoked in cells expressing complementary fragments corresponding to the caspase and calpane cleavage products, indicating strongly that the IP3 receptor fragments can be assembled into competent calcium release channels, and somewhat surprisingly that peptide continuity is not a prerequisite for IP3 to gate the IP3 receptor. Although peptide continuity appears not to be required for IP3 to, to, to simply open the channel, we reason that other forms of regulation may be dependent on an intact receptor, and this might be manifested as a change in the signature calcium signals evoked by activating the B-cell receptor in DT40 cells, which we believe represents the specific integrated response to regulatory input in a particular IP3 receptor subtype. Stimulation of B-cell receptors in cells expressing receptor 1 invariably results in a single calcium transient, while activation of R2 evokes sustained calcium oscillations. In stark contrast, robust calcium oscillations were evoked in cells expressing R1 fragments, while R2 fragments only yielded a, a single transient or abortive oscillations. Thus, while receptor fragmentation does not disable IP3 receptors to yield a leaky channel, it markedly alters uh, channel function, resulting in a profound change in the temporal properties of the calcium signal. Given that calcium oscillations are uh, typically decoded in a different manner to uh, single transients, uh, it's likely that the alteration in the signal will alter cell function. And since there's mounting evidence that low levels of protease activity, which do not promote cell death, are important for adaptive responses, further work is ongoing to define a role for cleaved IP3 receptors in these processes. And I'd like to thank uh, the members of my lab that did this work. The majority of the work was done by Camille uh, Alzayedi and uh, Larry Wagner, as well as uh, graduate students Raul Chandrasekhar and Li Wei Wang, and work was supported by the NIH.